back. And everybody lets you do it for a second. Uh, <laughs> it's contractually obligated. Yeah, I like it. Listen, uh, you know, obviously, you're no stranger to being in great fights. Yes. But, you know, you, sometimes you come up a little bit short in those. I guess, yes. I mean, what do you take out of those? I mean, I think people know every time you're on a car, they're going to get a good fight. Yeah. But I'm sure you want to get the wins as well. So, so what's it like for you kind of decompressing after fights like that? Um, I definitely need to decompress after fights like that, especially that last one, man. Uh, yeah, that was, that was a lot. We're going with Bobby. But uh, taking away from that, like, just growing up, growing up, becoming more confident, becoming more emotionally mature, not fighting on my shield every single time, and not becoming uh, um, provoked inside the cage, so to say. Yeah, just growing up. Growing up in the sport, man, I've been in, I, I came in here five years ago when I was, what, 23 years old, 24 years old, and I, I'm growing up in the UFC, so. That's awesome. So, would you say that from that fight until now, like, your focus has really been on more of the mental side of the game? than the, the uh, Everything, everything, man. It's like, physically, mentally, obviously, new weight class, um, way more consistent in my approach, um, dialed everything in, way more, you know, carrying over things of, like, composure from from training all the way over through every aspect of my life, my daily life. It's like what you do on one thing, you do on everything. So, yeah. Your career has been so weird, you know, like just yeah. all the, the wild up and down. Is there anything in particular that you would change, or do you feel like, hey, this is just what, what got me to where I am? Yeah, I got asked this the other day. It's like um, the only thing I would change is like I, I, I wish I would have been more serious about it from the get-go. You know? Maybe not serious the right word, but more, more consistent from the get-go. But other than that, now uh, I've learned a lot of great lessons in the sport through my opponents and through my coaches and through my teammates and through my ups and downs. And uh, I could say, yeah, I'd love to change things, but the reality of it is, I'm really friggin' happy where I'm at right now. What clicked that you were like, I gotta, I gotta start being more consistent. I gotta start being more dedicated to this or what have you. Mm, yeah, honestly, I think just the, I don't know. Uh, I think definitely going down to 45 helped. I mean, like, yeah, there's no no turning back. Got to burn the ships. Like, it's, it's all in or nothing now. Um, but I think uh, I've always been super consistent training. Like, I enjoy what I do. Like, I love the process. I'm very process-oriented, not so much goal-oriented. So I don't know if anything clicked. Just certain things became more consistent, and certain things from the last fight kind of reared their head and – allow me to look at it and be like, okay, that needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed, that needs to be fixed. Let's go handle those issues. Nice. Uh, the matchup with Mike, what, what did you think when uh, when that was the opponent that was given to you? Yeah, I was excited, man. Um, Mike's a tough guy. Yeah, he's a great wrestler, great submission artist, but fuck him. <laughs> like, uh, I'm going out there to fucking put on a show, man, and reintroduce myself to the UFC, introduce myself to this division. Like, let's go. That's why I was kind of most interested. Like, I think about you as, like, you probably want to go out there and just put on absolute war. He probably wants to go out there and maybe hold you against the cage or hold you yeah. on the canvas. Is yeah, it, so he, was that frustrating to think, like, that's going to be the game plan? Nah, cool, man. I mean, people try to do that to Whitaker. People try to do that to Izzy. It's like, you know, good fucking luck. You're not going to hold me down. Like, who, who's taking me down the UFC? I've gotten taken down a couple of times. Who's held me down the UFC? Nobody. Who have I taken down the UFC? Most of the guys I fought. Like, Nobody, like, it's really hard to take down Bobby. I've taken him down, like, got, like, six or seven takedowns on him. Like, I could fucking wrestle. And my submission grappling, my, my ground game, top notch. Like, I'm ready. Let's go. Nice. Last thing for me, I mean, I, I know you want to go out there and get a win. I'm sure it'll probably be a fight of the night worthy type fight because that's just the way you fight. But does this feel like a, I don't know, a fresh start, like a new chapter? I mean, does it, is, it, is it, like, a cliche to say that, or does it really feel that way? Uh, yeah, no, it feels like a fresh start, man. Like, New weight class, uh, I, so what, 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 I got 10 fights in the UFC now, right? So it's my 11th fight, the second second 10, the second 10 in the UFC, so it's kind of like a landmark, right? It's like a turning point. But, yeah, new weight class, man, just new me. Like, new everything. Like, let's go. New decade. Like, I guess that was last year. I don't know, but fuck. <laughs> Lando over here. I know you got from the East Coast, but with that, with the crowd. Hey, you, you're from the like, East Coast too, ain't you? I can hear it in your voice. No, nah, I'm, I'm from Dallas, Texas. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, with 
that being said, with this crowd going to be here live and a lot of these people are li like like boxing with the Mexican style, do you think you're going to feed off that energy? Because it's going to be in the building on Saturday night. I mean, I always feed off the energy, man. Bigger, you know, The brighter the lights, the better it is, man. I fucking love it. Love it. Well, so it would be safe to say that we're going to see you just come out taking chances, looking for that performance of the night or knockout bonus to add to your, add to your wallet. Uh, I mean, take chances, yeah, but calculated risks, you know. It's like uh, I won't be doing too many calculations in there, but I'm going to fight a little smarter than you usually see for me, you know. I mean, I, I've been an entertainer in the past, but I, I want to be a champion. I want to be a fuck. I want to be the guy. I want to be the top dog. And top dog don't get down with just fucking slinging and banging, you know? Like, let's go, but let's be smart. You, you seem like a different guy from before COVID. Did you, did this kind of awakeness kind of happen during COVID? You like work on the mental, technical side, like, man, I do this good. Maybe you shouldn't be, you need to ease up on that. Is that kind of like what you did, kind of like a rebirth? Because you said new decade, new fighter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been a, a, an overhaul, you know, an overhaul to everything. So it would be safe to say Saturday night, it's all about making a statement? Yes. Yes. Lando, physically, how's the uh, drop down to featherweight been this week? It's great, man. Like, I, uh, percentage-wise, I'm closer to featherweight right now than I've been to lightweight for many of my fights. So I'm freaking golden. And then obviously you're known for your, your flashy style of striking in there. Uh, Mike's obviously a wrestler. Uh, we asked him how – what he thought of your wrestling, he said maybe the drop down would, wouldn't benefit you against someone with his style of fighting. Uh, what do you make of that? And what do you make of his striking in there, actually? Um, I don't know how the drop down wouldn't benefit me in wrestling. I mean, that's I have a size advantage. It's like, I fought bigger guys. That makes a big difference. So I don't know what he's talking about. But his striking, he's, he's a good wrestler. He's got he's got good shots. He's got a good top game. He's got you know, the strike is not that great. A little bit of a weird story with your teammate Donald Cerrone, former teammate yeah. Diego Sanchez, <laughs> kind of <laughs> making his way around. It's kind of taking the MMA world by storm lately. I played the fifth. Yeah. <laughs> there you the go. fifth. Uh, is that a Reptar shirt you're wearing? Just uh, just dinosaur. <laughs> 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 go 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 on with your cowboy and Diego question. I want I want to hear what it was. I just wanted you to like he said there was like a story of there was like a bar fight and the death punch didn't work oh, against him and everything. I don't know. If some, somebody that that is a triple OG at the gym where I train and uh, I still see him on a pretty frequent basis may or may not have been involved in a physical uh, confrontation with Joshua whatever his name is, and may or may not have put him in a triangle and submitted him at a bar. <laughs> I, I can't. I can neither confirm nor deny. Who was that? Well, when wasn't it? I mean, if I had to put a time stamp on it, I would say maybe in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Anybody else got questions? Nah. All right, cool. Appreciate you guys. Thanks, guys.